this video, I will show you how you can compile data on land uses that are key to your project. In the Land Use Planner, when you reach Step 2, the Land Use Step, you are asked to describe the main land uses found in your territory of interest. For each of these land uses, you will be asked to estimate key parameters, such as the cost and value of the main products and the productivity per hectares. You can fill in your best estimates of these values directly into step two of the tool. But if you don't have complete or good enough information at hand, or if you know that you may utilize the same land use data across different projects within the land use planner, then it's highly recommended to prepare your land use data from your workspace. So let's go to our workspace. Here, our land use data is stored under the tab land use models. If your workspace has just been created, these pages will be empty, like you can see here in the case of annual crops. But under perennial crops, you can see that data that's been previously added to our workspace is included here. And we can see that data is ordered under different tabs, annual crops, perennial crops, forests, livestock, and other land uses. The import tab here is to help you get started if you don't have much data yourself. Let's say, for example, that we're interested in rice cultivation. If we don't have our own data on rice cultivation, we can check to see if the Land Use Planner already has some data on rice cultivation available. Here's a list of all of the land use data that has been made available in the tool. And you can select to import or not import only those that are of interest to you. So here I'll select to import rice. Then we'll import that into our workspace. The rice data is coming from another country, so I need to verify the information and adjust it if necessary. To do that, I find my rice under the tab annual crops and I click view one practice. From there, I click the pencil icon to edit this land use data. I can first edit the name of the rice as I will then edit the data that follows. The key data to check is productivity, and that's productivity in tons per hectare per year, which I could change here. And then for annual crops like rice, you have the option to specify whether the crop is itinerant. So you should check this box and fill in the data only in cases of shifting cultivation systems. In all other cases, do not check this box. Then you should check the cost per hectare per year and the to produce this amount of rice, as well as the amount and type of labor. And below, you can also adjust the data on the number of trees per hectare of rice field here in the trees on farm box which is important, especially in the case of agroforestry systems. And here for all land uses, the Land Use Planner will also let you provide some indication of the biodiversity value found in this, in this specific land use. And this is expressed as a percentage of the value found in an intact local forest. For annual crops, if you have no idea, you can leave this as zero by default. In any case, when using this data in a specific land use planner project, you can always adjust it later, perhaps during a workshop with experts in this area. Finally, under this section, intercropping or silvopastoralism, you have the option to associate a secondary land use. For instance, in, our, in the case of our rice, perhaps there is some livestock farming associated with the rice field, and you could add that here. You then click on save, and this data will now be available from your land use planner interface. Another way to add land use data into your workspace is simply by clicking the green buttons here. If you'd like to add a different cultivation practice for rice, we can look for rice here under land use models and then click new practice for rice. But if rice hasn't been added to our list yet, then we first have to create a category rice by clicking the add new button here. We would then write rice and specify the average economic value of a ton of rice in our region, as well as the calorie content. The 
Information on calorie content is expressed in calories per 100 grams, and you can easily find this information on the internet for most known crops. Now let's go back to our land use models page, and you'll notice that you we can only make the distinction between the generic crop and the specific cropping practices for annual and perennial crops. For forests, livestock, and other land uses, it's a bit simpler and there's only one level and one entry that you can make. We have forests here and if we wanted to make a new type of forest, we can click add new. In some cases, and to save time, you might prefer to duplicate one of your existing land use data sheets and adjusting the key data from there for a new type of forest. To do so, you would click the option to duplicate. That's the icon next to the pencil icon that looks like two boxes. And this option to duplicate is available for any land use. One more thing, if you click on any land use here, you can see that there are two elements. There's visibility in the interface and data quality. By choosing visible, you are making the specific land use data available from your interface of the land use planner. This means that when you add a new type of forest in your land use planner project, you will have the option to select this prepared data instead of having to fill the empty boxes one by one. And now turning to data quality, if you select good, it means that you consider this data to be both complete and good enough to be used and even shared with other users of the land use planner. In fact, remember at the beginning of this video when we got some help to get started with rice? When we imported a rice cultivation practice under the tab import, we were able to do that thanks to someone else in the land use planner community who shared their data on rice. Of course, we at the European Forest Institute also do a quick check on the completeness of data before making it available to all registered users. So don't hesitate to mark your data as good and reference it if you think it can be useful to others. For informed land use planning, we can naturally all benefit from the work of others. And if you're in a sharing mood or when you want to when you want to collaborate with collaborators to check your data, you can also click here to download a one-pager data sheet for any of your land uses. In the next video in this series, I will show you how you can compile land use data offline using our data collection worksheet.